What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Wednesday, December 9th, 2020. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the Rogue One at Gary Witta. Hello, how are you, sir? I'm excellent, Gary. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Do you have enough in the tank? Right before we went live, you were talking about you have senioritis. I think it's going around. It's the beginning of December. We always talk about it this time of year. Why are we here? What are we doing? You know, everyone gets senioritis this time of year. You know, that feeling that you kind of like checked out and you're ready to just kind of, you know, get into the holidays and, you know, you try to establish that nice, easy glide path into the uh, – into the holidays nobody wants to be like busting their ass working like right up until the last Never. minute i still have a few I things period, like i don't want to bust my ass I, oh year round i don't want yeah, to bust exactly. my ass exactly come on what's the least amount of my effort ass I can in. in my 20s i'm done busting my go. ass for anyone yeah, yeah, yeah. um but yeah it's like no, nobody wants to be working hard like right up until the last day sometimes that's unavoidable but i'm trying to kind of triage my remaining workload to kind of basically do only like the bare minimum and most important things i'm not burned out when it comes to this though when you know i'm always excited to talk to you about video games greg always always and you have lots to talk about today because it is an x box day thank god we have gary with a host of the kind of funny x cast here to talk about halo infinite coming in fall 2021 to talk about xbox game pass coming to ios and pc and of course to talk about your expectations being kept in check for the game awards because this is kind of funny games daily each and every weekday on a variety of platforms we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about if you like that, be part of the show at patreon.com slash kind of funny games over on patreon.com slash kind of funny games. You can write in with your questions, your comments, your concerns, your squad up requests and everything under the daily video game sun. Of course, on patreon.com slash kind of funny games. You can get the show ad free. You can get it with the exclusive post show we do each and every day. And you can get a whole body of other things that are cool and going on over there and fun for you. However, if you have no bucks to toss our way, no big deal. You, of course, can watch live as we record the show on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames, just like Professor Nelson is, Praying Ocelot is, Dark Knight 6678 is. If you're watching live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames, you have a special job. Go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, roosterteeth.com, and listening on podcast services is around the globe kevin you okay over there i heard the mouse drop and then i hear paul's call in the background are you okay oh whoops sorry yeah one day that's how it's gonna go down for uh kevin he's gonna have a heart attack at the keyboard face plant into it mike's live nobody knows what's going on that's how that's how we would want to go though don't you think i've said it before and i'll say it again here live with you gary everybody watching later when i die on camera i want that episode to post okay when I yeah, go down, I want the biggest biggest ratings you ever get. A hundred percent. I gotta I gotta keep I gotta make sure kind of funny can at least benefit from my passing. Go so I wanna make top. sure. Exactly. Go out exactly. on top. Serving kind of funny, delivering them clicks to you to, with your last breath. That's what I'm here for. You know what I mean? I'm the giving tree, Kevin. All right. That's what I when when I'm and then at the funeral the when you live boy. stream when you live stream the funeral, I want you to read a passage from the giving tree. All right, Kevin. Which one? Ah the giving tree. I'll, I'll get original. Do you imagine? There, wait, whoa, whoa, did they remake the Giving Tree as a book? Wait, what? Is it? Is it? When is I die it, at my funeral, I want you to read a passage from the Giving Tree, which is a small book, a children's book. Which right? I, I just read that with my daughter the other day. Yeah, Shel Silverstein. Book. Yeah, right. So I'm saying, which book. passage you want me to read? Oh, you, but then you said, "Oh, I'll do a new one." No, no, no I, I said like I'll improvise or something like that. No, I don't want you to improvise. I want you to read don't off know, the page. I'll, all right. I'll it out. Yeah, I figured it. Out. Don't bring in where the sidewalk ends. All right, I want giving tree. Anyways, uh, housekeeping for you today. Uh, no, not today. I'm sorry. Andy is going to be streaming Cyberpunk 2077 to show off ray tracing and all that goodness on his NVIDIA RTX 3080 Thursday, December 10th from 1 to 3 p.m. Pacific time. And then Tuesday, December 15th from 11 to 1 p.m. Pacific time. Of course, that's twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. Like, follow, subscribe, all that jazz. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Blackjack uh, and Tom Bach. Today, we're brought to you by Quip, Trojan, and BetterHelp. But I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> Time for some news. <laughs> we got six items on the Roper Report. A baker's dozen. Tell you what, Gary. Uh, Jen bought me vitamin D chewables. And she said, leave them at your desk. You'll never forget to take them. And it works. I take one now every well, time you before know, I start the show. A lot of people are doing that because they're not getting any sun. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that uh-huh. the reason she got them for you? Well, no, I got a little bit pasty. Well, no, I got a cancer doctor like two years ago, and she was like, hey, you got to start taking vitamin D because your vitamin D is low. And I was like, yep, bought them and never took them. And so then it was just that thing. I think on top of that, I'm, I'm a pasty, no sun boy. And so then on top of now being trapped here, you know, on the inside, even though I probably get more sun than I did in the studio. I digress. Number one on the Roper Report. Halo Infinite is officially coming fall 2021. Kevin, please click that link. Throw up the blog post that they put up yesterday. Uh, Gary, I'm going to jump into a lengthy read here, all right? But strap in, then we're going to come back to you since you're Mr. Xbox. Kevin, uh, this is a long uh, post over on 343, so please feel free to scroll as you see fit. There's a bunch of images down at the bottom from Halo uh, Infinite and all that jazz. Anyways, though, jumping in. Hey, everyone. I'm Joseph Statton. If you're a longtime part of the Halo community, you may already know me. If you're new to the community, hello, it's great to meet you. I was part of the Bungie team who made Halo CE, Halo 2, Halo 3, Halo 3 ODST, and Halo Reach. I came up with the design side of these projects, uh, wearing many different hats over the years, including writer, cinematic director, creative director, even a voice of the grunts. After Reach shipped, I became a Halo fan, cheering on 343 Industries from the sidelines. But I've spent the last four months immersing myself back into the Halo universe. And it's my honor as creative director to help our team ship Halo Infinite in fall 2021. Yep, that's when the game's coming out. And from now until then, every one of us at 343 and our great partner teams will be building, testing, and polishing an experience we hope all of you love. I joined 343 right as the team was wrestling with feedback from the July campaign demo. This discussion boiled down to one fundamental truth. We needed more time to do things right. That included pushing hard on the pushing hard in the fall, giving the team time to recharge over the holidays, and then coming back in January to finish the game at a healthy pace. Because Halo Infinite in the fall of 2020 because Halo Infinite in the fall of 2021 is just the beginning of the adventure. As I said, this post goes on at length. There's a bunch of different interviews in here. They talk about the art style. They talk about uh, uh, the name of the guy who's escaping me right now, who's the internet meme, the, the character that already made fun of. Gary, help me out. Chad, help the me out. internet meme? Yeah, the character from the game that everybody was making fun of. Craig, thank you very much, at, uh, Master Jim. They talk about Craig. They talk about why he looks the way he looks in that original demo. There's a whole bunch of great content in this thing and a whole bunch of different interviews talking about what they're going on and how they're improving it. But I want to jump to the end when it kicks back over uh, to Joseph Satin. We are making this game for us. We're making it for you. Starting with, with this update, and he's talking about the blog post, we're going to be sharing more about what we're doing and, most importantly, why we're doing it. So here are a few things I'd like to share. My first week on the job, I played the entire Infinite campaign, twice. I was in a word, stunned, in the best way possible, by what the team had done. Infinite is, by far, the most expansive and vertical Halo world ever. Why did the team do this? Because they understand that wonder and freedom are key to the Halo experience. I could feel the classic Halo 30 seconds of fun beating at the heart of Infinite's world. But I had never felt more powerful, more mobile, more in command of a rich set of tactical choices. This was the Halo we imagined back in 2000, finally come to life after 20 years of technical and creative innovation. Sure, there were bugs in the build and clearly more work to do, but this concept art by Martin uh, Demachenbold, and I think, Kevin, you're, that's the one right there. Nail it, Kevin. One of the many incredible pieces uh, he's made for the game. It encapsulates all the excitement and curiosity and joy I felt on my first journey through Zeta Halo, the, myst- the most mysterious, dangerous, and possibly rich place in the entire Halo universe. Everywhere I looked, I saw choices. Do I, ex- do I explore off the golden path? Assault and banished war base guard- guarding uh, the Valley Pass. Follow a flight of forerunner sentinels into an unexpected cavern. Rescue a squad of marines dug in and desperate, ha- ha- and desperate halfway up the mountain. Or do I keep pulling the mainline story thread that feels epic and intimate at the exact same time? Truly, Halo Infinite is a world in which I love spending time and that I'm thrilled to return to both as a designer and a player. On behalf of the entire team, thank you for your patience and your passion. We can't wait for you to join us on the next Halo adventure, or on on Halo Infinite, the Halo Infinite adventure. First with insider, fu- first with insider fighting later next year, and then when we ship in fall 2021. In the meantime, I hope you have a restful holiday season. We'll catch you in the new year. Gary Witta, co-host of the Kind of Funny X Cast. What? How does? What? How are you feeling? What were you thinking? Did the world stop yesterday when fall 2021 was slapped on Halo? 
No, I wasn't surprised by this at all. In fact, as I pointed out yesterday, I called this a while ago. Mm-hmm. I don't, I, I don't think this was terribly. Um, I mean, look, it's good news. First of all, it's nice to have a date. I don't think Microsoft and three four three wanted, uh, you know, Halo fans uh, to be left, you know, in the dark, you know, wondering when this game is coming out for too long, especially after you know the embarrassment of having to pull the uh, the initial release date. I think they wanted to kind of get back on track and be seen to be back on track as sure. soon as possible. So it's good that they've, I think it's good that they haven't, you know, waited uh, too long um, to, uh, to make this announcement. You know, they needed to kind of reset the narrative and the new cycle. And this does that. It kind of puts them back on a positive track. And I think I said, I'd have to go back and look, but I, I remember saying like, I think that this is probably most likely now looking at like fall holiday, 2021, certainly no later than that. Yeah. Um, but it may, but it makes a lot of sense. You know, as Bonnie Ross pointed out yesterday, the head of 343, uh, 2021 uh, will also be the 20th anniversary of the original of, of Halo. So, you know, they'll probably do a big year of Halo 20th anniversary, if not like an entire year round celebration, but like a big season of PR and marketing guff that will lead up to, you know, the, the launch Infinite, of Halo yeah. Infinite as like, you know, the, the flagship you know, big thing, but I, I imagine you'll see some kind of big like Halo celebration, you know, multi-dimensional 100%, 100%. marketing push next, next year. Yeah, leading up to this. Year. So it makes sense. You know, it, it always it always sounds like PR word salad, but of course it's the, it was the right thing to do. Delay the game, wait. Halo's too important to mess around with or ship a. You know, Halo's not a oh like we got to ship what we have, we'll patch it later kind of game. They cannot afford to do that with their flagship franchise. Mm-hmm. So they took you know they 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 took the hit on the chin when they had to announce it. You know, everyone was bummed out by that news. It was a bad look uh, for Microsoft, but you know they're they're getting it back on. Uh, on track now i think you know we're all we're all excited for it and you know next next fall is gonna think about it think about it greg next fall we'll be able to go out we'll we'll be vaccinated we'll be we'll be able to we'll be able to go outside we'll be able to play every door video games again like we're getting we're getting we're getting our lives back greg one piece at a time i'm interested uh about it i think it's a you know Again, I urge you to go read the entire blog post. It's more than just Joseph over there uh, writing. And I think what stood out to me was this idea that he puts here, right, that this is just the start and what they're going to be doing. Starting with this update, we're going to be sharing more about what we're doing and most importantly, why we're doing it. You know, I talk about all the time. Transparency is something that... uh, a lot of game developers wrestle with in different ways. And I think, you know, we've talked about it a lot lately with uh, movies and how movies announce things, you know, what, years, decades before they're ever going to be shot if they actually actually get shot. And video games don't do that. And again, the worst thing you can do, I think, as a developer is when you have bad news clam up and then let, you know, just let it, the silence fill that void and everybody get really riled up and angry. If they're going to be communicating throughout next year, talking about what's going on, I think that can only benefit them. And again, You know, addressing stuff head on, talking about Craig and their blog post today, uh, talking about the reaction that it saw, what they're doing, how they're changing and literally having questions of like, how have you updated that? What are you changing and where does it go? Explaining how you got there. That's what people will need to see, I think, to get them back on the road to being hyped. Uh, B Costa 56 writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny games just like you can and says, hey, Greg and Gary. With the news of Halo Infinite now slated for a fall 2021 release, I would like to get your take on what this could do to the series now, heading toward a six-year lull without a mainline Halo release. Looking back on the original Xbox, we got Halo uh, Combat Evolved and Halo 2, which were groundbreaking at the time, and personally, I didn't know anyone who wasn't playing Halo 2 online. On the 360, we received seven games, Halo 3, Halo Wars, Halo 3 ODST, Halo Reach, Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary, Halo 4, and Halo Spartan Assault. Last gen on Xbox One, we got Halo 5 Guardians, which had a campaign that most felt was a letdown. Halo Master Chief Collection, which was an absolute train wreck out of the gate and still today has issues. And then Halo Wars 2, which is cool if you're an RTS, is your thing. Then we get to the current gen, Series X, Series S, uh, with a highly anticipated launch day Halo game, and the game gets delayed three months before launch until the fall 2021. Halo was the game to be playing, and now it just seems like a game some might play. What do you think this game needs to accomplish in order to gain the ground and get back to the top? Gary, what does Halo need, what does Halo Infinite need to do to become Halo again because to B Costa's point I remember 
when the world would stop for a release of Halo. I remember in college when parties would stop and people would run off to play multiplayer. I remember at IGN what a big deal it was when the new Halo dropped. First of all, I just want to kind of finish the 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 point we were we were talking about from the from the initial news of the release date. Sure. I am actually a little surprised that they have announced this so quickly. I mean, it, you know, it, it, it's hard to even judge time this year because in 2020, a, a week feels like Fair. a month and a month feels like a year. But it wasn't that long ago because I remember having Phil Spencer on Animal Talking the day after they announced it. It wasn't that long ago that, you know, that news of, oh, it's not going to launch with uh, the console and it might go back into the new year and we don't know. Like, that doesn't feel like that was terribly long ago. August and 11th so, is what I'm seeing from a version. Yeah, so, oh, oh, I, mean, I, mean, that, I mean, it feels like years ago, but it really it? wasn't. Um, yeah, because we have lost all sense of like time and perspective and reality in 2020. But like we're coming into the holiday season now. Everyone's talking about the new consoles. There's plenty of other things, there's cyberpunk. There's all sorts of other things to be talking about. It wasn't like there was this void that Microsoft needed to fill in terms of when are we going to get some you know updated news on a Halo release. Everyone was kind of like in, okay, come back to us. Like we're bummed out, but like come back to us when you're ready. We look forward to hearing about the new release date. But like people were, it's not like people were getting antsy or like, you know, come on, what's going on with Halo? Like Microsoft decided to, you know, this is surprising, right? We didn't know that they were going to come out with a, a new release date quite so soon. They obviously, what that tells me is, they must feel really, they, A, they must have felt like for whatever reason internally, it was re really important to not wait and to release this news now that they wanted to kind of, you know, move past whatever negativity was still associated sure. with, uh, with the aftermath of the, of the game being delayed. But also, this is the other thing, because like, you know, they, they don't make these, th these announcements without really, like, there would have been a bunch of senior people around the table deciding what you know oh, 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 can we do this are we going to announce why announce now are we confident we, we're going to be able to stick to this date my feeling is they must feel really 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 confident that they can hit that date because especially after you know still having egg on their face from missing the launch window then they're not going to do that again they're not going to announce another date and then miss that right they must have really really high confidence that they can hit that that fall holiday window, you know, date when you know that's when big games typically come out anyway. And it also makes me really think about like just how much do we really know or understand about what has been going on inside three four three of the development of Halo Infinite? At some point down the road, a Jason Schreier type figure will you of know course. do do the big story, the you know the full kind of reporting from what happened. That might not that might not be for a while. But for right now, it kind of makes me think maybe things weren't as bad as we thought. You know, we, they, you know, with senior people coming and going, and the delay being put back, and all these rumors circulating, like we would think we we were on a on a on a track of feeling like, well, may, maybe the game's in a really bad shape. That you know, all this stuff is happening. Maybe it's it's in real trouble. That might be why Microsoft felt the need to announce this new date. So no, 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 nothing is fucked, dude. We're coming out fall twenty twenty one. Because again, if they're announcing that date, they must feel confident about it. Maybe it's not in bad. Maybe it's not that bad a shape. They must have looked at the game and said, "Yeah, we can ship this in fall 2021, and it's going to be as good as it needs to be." So, well, I think you're you're nailing it. I think honestly, what this is is that you know, as I think there's a couple of really key points in here, right? In from Joseph's letter, and it's him saying number uh, not number one i guess but him saying i've played I, I first got hired here or when i first came back in the summer right i played through the campaign twice so the game is content complete now it's about bug fixing polishing visuals right that i also think that again starting with this update we're going to be sharing more about what we're doing and most importantly why we're doing it why are they doing that gary because they want to own this conversation think about the last i, I you know uh, october 28th 2020 Chris Lee announced he was leaving. That was the director of Halo Infinite was leaving 343. And that was one of those games dailies where we're like, oh my God, what is going on over there? They're starting from scratch. Is this game going down in the tubes? What is, you know, is it worse than we even thought it was? This is piggybacking off of, I'm looking at Matt Kim's article from IGN, August 2019, when the creative director, Tim Longo, left. And so if the narrative that we're going to spin on podcasts, and I mean us as an industry, not just kind of funny, and hardcore halo people who are on the subreddits and in the fan groups and in chats and on you know snowbike mike's chat talking about all this stuff that know everything if they're gonna get well you know people left and god only knows what's going on over there what are they doing we haven't heard anything about release date when is it coming is it coming spring da, 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 da. i think this is them very much saying you know what as you said things aren't fucked 
And we need to own this message. We need to own our mistakes, come out and talk about what, you know, went wrong and why, you know, we thought we weren't ready for prime time with the Xbox Series X launch. But on top of that, not let this expectation hang so that when you get to that first half of 2021 and the game doesn't come out or you put out a a date then that says it's going to be fall, people flip out and think it's another delay. You get here. And and, and here's the thing. They really, really can't miss this one because just as uh, the launch of the of the next gen consoles, the Xbox is was a bad was a bad thing to miss next year again the 20th anniversary of halo yeah. uh is you know that's that's the perfect you know window to make a big event out of this celebrate halo all year long the tv series i'm guessing is probably gonna see the light of day next year as well maybe next year could be if they if they pull everything off right and orchestrate it correctly and microsoft is a big company that's good at like you know making all the moving parts kind of work in synchronicity with one another um, this could be a really big deal in terms of what Halo really, really need what what it needs to do. I don't know about what it needs to do, what I would like it to do. And this is something I've been banging on about for years. And I say this as someone who's worked on the Halo franchise. I was a story consultant on Halo Five, and uh, but one of the things that made that job kind of difficult for me was I I I'm I'm not a huge fan of the mythology, and I've said this to them before. Is I kind of feel like the mythology is at this point way too overbaked. It's 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 all over the place. It's strip it's, it down. Kind of, strip it's, it down. It's, it's it's impenetrable. Like explain Halo to me in sixty seconds. It's really hard to do. Destiny has the same problem. It's like a Traveler. lot of proper noun. It's a lot. It's a lot of proper nouns. It's a lot of shit you need to know. <laughs> you know. Especially after like seven or eight games into the franchise, where every game the mythology gets deeper and more intricate, and they add more and more stuff. But it's all just stuff. Like it's all just a bunch of stuff. It doesn't the, the the mythology and the storytelling of Halo doesn't connect with me. It's just a lot of like blah, like nerdy sci-fi stuff that doesn't really add up to like a compelling emotional story. And yeah. I wish they could find a way to kind of make the game connect with me emotionally and narratively in oh, a yeah. way that the Halo games haven't in the past. I mean, I know you recently got back experimenting in the Halo world. Did you get that? Did you get that same sense from the storytelling? Oh, I mean, yeah, I didn't like Halo. I didn't like Halo One when I when I played it. Now, granted, keep in mind I'm playing it on stream, so I'm, uh, we're yelling at the chat. Tim and Tim and I are talking over cutscenes and stuff like that. This isn't the way to get immersed in Halo by any stretch of the imagination. But for me, in general, I think yeah, to be cautious question, like what does this game need to accomplish in order to gain the ground and get back on top? I think it needs to be a fucking action packed blockbuster sci fi campaign and then a kick ass multiplayer mode. I think if you can do those two things, that's Halo, right? I think that if you can have a campaign like you're talking about, Gary, that is emotionally resonant and approachable, I think you could turn anyone, myself included, into a Halo fan. And then if I get into the door that way and I want to go to multiplayer and my friends are all having so much fun and we're doing all these cool things and you know the XP is building and I see what I'm unlocking and I know what we're where we're going and what the you know awards are and, and accommodations on that jazz, like. There's something there to it. Like, I think, you know, like yesterday we did a Butterfinger sponsored stream, but it was sponsored by Butterfinger, not Halo. But we played Halo, right? And it was me playing with Snowbike Mike. And, you know, I'm running around these maps in Halo uh, Master Chief Collection. And I have no fucking idea what they are because I never played Halo multiplayer. And I'm getting my teeth kicked in, but I'm having fun hanging out with Mike. Now, and, But granted, I wanted to be able to run in every map and I wanted to be able to aim down sights and all these different things like... And I know that there's, Mike was telling me, oh, no, no, there's certain, you know, controller layouts that'll let you do it with left bumper. You can run and stuff like that. If you can give me a halo that I feel like I'm getting in, not on the ground level of, don't throw away your legacy, obviously. Like, you make make it feel like halo, make it look like halo, give blood gulch and all the maps people want. But have it be approachable to newcomers, have it be something that's going to draw back in the people who have lapsed halo memories. I think that's what you need. And that's no small order to be hey we need to be both contemporary and draw on nostalgia but i do think 343 is up for it i do think the halo franchise is up for it and i do think microsoft knows that's what they need i think i think i think it's in, in terms of like the storytelling and the mythology and all of that kind of stuff the, le- the least they can do is try and hopefully find a way for the game even though it's you know the next you know, it's a continuation of the existing mythology which again is very dense and sprawling and kind of impaired i i think frankly quite inaccessible at this point is if they can find a way to onboard new people who are Halo curious, but don't quite, you know, who, who are a bit intimidated by sure. the impenetrable nature of all the mythology. Oh, you know, do I have to go read like any any time there's like a story 
uh, you'll see this. Like I guarantee you're going to see this a year from now. As Halo is, is like coming up for launch, you're going to see IGN and GameSpot and kind of funny and all the big outlets going to be like, here's like here's the ten, here's the ten thousand word fucking article you need to read to understand what Halo is before you can play it. It's like if if you need to do those kind of articles, that's a failing of the game. I shouldn't have I shouldn't have to go study. Like the game should the the game should know how to like narratively onboard me no matter how much mythology has gone before. So I hope at least that that they've approached the storytelling in a in a way that it can be in like an entry point into the franchise for people that haven't played it before. Uh, Greg Bring Miller, hands kind up. of funny .com. Yeah, I have a question for you from the press pool. Do you think with everything you're saying right there, did God of War successfully do that? 2018. Yeah, I think so because if you know, it felt it felt like a reset in many ways, you know, moving to a completely different kind of mythology. Yeah, um, yeah, I thought so. Um, I mean, like I, I, it was actually the first God of War game that I spent serious time with. I'd never played uh, any of the previous God of War games. I I knew of them, but I'd never sure. sat down and like really played. You like, feel PlayStation lost playing 2. it, right? Yeah, you, you weren't like, yeah, like I, no. What, and I felt I, I, I was I was aware that there was a lot of storytelling that had gone before. So yeah, that was fine. I, di I didn't feel lost because of that. Like the story in and of itself, but you know, and that's because there were points of human connection, like Kratos and the boy, like those are characters you can relate to. One of the, one of the existential, existential problems that I think they have with Halo is that Master Chief is just not a very interesting character. Like he's just kind of a cipher. He's a guy behind a fucking helmet. And there are ways to do interesting characters like that. I mean, they've done it with the Mandalorian, but like, I just don't think that uh, uh, that character is there's just there's no dimensionality to that sure. character that I'm aware of, and it's it's hard for me to connect with Master Chief as like, yeah, I, I can really get inside, you know, get inside this guy's head and feel like I'm I'm relating to this character. The other, and then the other issue is, and maybe it's not that big a deal, but I know that it, I think it's like an existential problem for anyone bringing a new first person shooter to market these days is that whole genre of first person shooter just feels a bit kind of creatively tapped out at this point like what's left like where's the where's the innovation gonna come from like i i think that might be why they're leaning back into the idea of a lot of people said oh this has like old school halo vibes to it when they showed that first trailer and a lot of people wanted that maybe a lot of people just want like a warm halo flavored you know security blanket to wrap around them and that's fine but i don't think halo is going to do anything to this new halo is going to do anything to necessarily like reinvent or or move you know the way that we think about first person games forward if, mm -hmm. if they if they do if they manage to do that it'll come out of left field because if you think about it like when was the last time that that the first person games were like truly truly like moved forward you've got to go back like 20 years to you know half life and half life 2 and then you've got to jump forward to like you know battlegrounds and the and 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 the and the innovation of Battle Royale. And I do think Halo will probably ship with a Battle Royale mode. It'll be really, they really dumb well. if they don't. Everybody wants it. Everybody wants it. But in terms of like linear, you know, and the other way you can go is like the Anthem Destiny route where you open the world up and turn it into a big sandbox. But we've seen how that can be fraught with peril. For every Destiny, there's an Anthem. And that's, and that's a new way forward that people are still figuring out how to design games in a way that is satisfying. And I think that Halo will eventually probably go in that direction. I think they probably thought it was too big a risk with this one. Let's just do a straight down the middle, again, you know, comfort food, spaghetti and meatballs, linear campaign with lots of multiplayer options, Halo game. I don't think Halo is going to reinvent the wheel um, uh, to any extent, but I, but I think it will be the game that a lot, I, I think a lot of Halo fans will be very happy with it from my whole, that's a, oh, the yeah, thing this, is this, i don't this think looks it, and feels like halo to me this is i just wanted another dose of halo with next gen graphics and and this is what that is i don't think you know to the question what do you think the game needs to accomplish in order to gain ground and get back on top i don't think it needs to reinvent the wheel i don't i think it needs to learn from my, all the different story beats and uh, battle royales and multiplayer modes that have come since the last halo include those quality of life improvements so that they're competitive on that scale and i think you have something if it is the nostalgia of Halo wrapped with contemporary FPS, wrapped with you know what you already loved about Halo multiplayer and the addition of new things from there, I, I don't know. I mean, I I, th I think it's arguing from a business point. Yeah, they probably have decided. Yeah, let's let's not try and reinvent the wheel here. Don't fix it. But at the same time, I kind of look at at get at franchises like Halo as like the standard bearers of what first person shooters are on console you know your call of duty is there as well um but you know when you when you think of like if you say like name the premier console you know first person shooter franchises halo is going to be right at the top of that list and so you know as as 
as a first person shooter game from which there is so much expectation and so much exposure like everyone's going to be eyes on halo when it comes out next year mm. i i kind of have high expectations from it. and like you just to, another man. just another solid you know predictable but satisfying halo game i kind of I, I kind of feel like they should be pushing for more than that but again the more that you push and the more that you decide the more that you try to innovate the more you expose yourself to risk maybe they don't want to expose themselves to that risk that's fair Number two on the Roper Report, more Xbox news. Xbox Game Pass is coming to iOS and PC and a whole bunch of other Xbox tidbits. This is from Jarrett West over on the Xbox uh, Wire. Uh, over there, some bullet points. November, Xbox Game Pass monthly engagement more than doubled. Uh, over 1.6 million seamless upgrades were delivered to Series uh, X slash S owners with smart delivery. And over 40% of you joining Xbox for the first time are playing on the Xbox Series S. Uh, here's where we get into the actual post, though, from Jarrett not just bullet points cloud gaming beta with xbox uh, game pass ultimate coming to ios and pc in 2021 expanding xbox to new players is central to our ambition of helping games and developers find an easy path to the world's three billion gamers we are doing this by embracing multiple devices and providing a consistent xbox experience wherever you log in whether that's on your xbox series x s pc xbox one android device or starting spring 2021 your windows pc and ios device from the cloud in spring 2021, we will take the next step in our journey to reach more players around the world by making cloud gaming as part of the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate available on Windows PC through the Xbox app and browser and iOS devices through the mobile web browser. By adding over a billion devices as a path to playing the Xbox ecosystem, we envision a seamless experience for all types of players. Whether it's playing Minecraft Dungeons with your Xbox friends using touch controls on an iPhone, or jumping into Destiny 2 Beyond Light Strike on a Surface Pro uh, when you have a break between meetings. Whatever screen you choose, we want to make it easy for you to continue your game and connect with your friends. Finally, we'll be bringing cloud gaming with Xbox Game Pass Ultimate to new markets, including Australia, Brazil, Japan, and Mexico, where we recently began our limited Project xCloud preview program. We can't wait to share more early next year about our cloud gaming ambitions and how you can expect to take your gaming experiences further. They fucking did it, Gary. Finally. Let's get it going. Let's get iOS over there. You know what I mean? That's what it's all about with this Xbox Game Pass Ultimate slash xCloud. Whoever whoever wrote that um, press release, I don't know what kind of lifestyle they're leading, but the idea of playing a Destiny... T I'm not a big Destiny 2 strike. Uh, sorry, a big Destiny 2 player, but the idea of doing a Destiny 2 strike in between meetings, how fucking long this guy's break? Because doesn't it take like six hours to do a Destiny 2 raid? No, no, that's a raid. That's a raid. That's a raid. Strike oh, that's, do the strike in a raid. Raid is the one where you get how eight players together, right? And you go in there and you do it, and it's multiple hours. I thought the strike was like been. the really, really hardcore raid that took a long no, time. No, 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 no. Strikes three people. Kind of funny. com slash you're wrong, man. All this. I did just get the Destiny Platinum on PS5, but that's because I just turned on Destiny PS5 and it read my PS5. I should spend more time hanging out with Fran. Um, Warthog no, but of course in the chat says strike is like 15, 20 minutes. That. Oh, okay. So you can't. Do not hang out with Fran. There is, is like a little bite sized chunk of Destiny 2. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, particularly. Particularly on the iOS side, yes, of course they they, they had to they had to fix that. The you know iOS is a, a massive part of you know the smartphone market, uh, certainly around the world and specifically in the US, where it's a very big uh, part of the market. They they couldn't leave they couldn't leave those players um, out in the cold. As a business proposition, it's just foolish to not be able to bring uh, this to you know such a big part of the potential. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm in that market. I'm an Xbox guy, but I also have an iPhone. Yeah. I don't want to be left out. So, oh, yeah, it sucks. Yeah, and I'm not, I'm not, and I'm, nor am I going to go buy an Android phone just to you know just to play those games. 100%. Um, I still think there's a chance of like a dedicated handheld device down the road that they might uh, you know aim at that market. But yeah, but just get the, the stick the to meantime, put your in, yeah, in, in in the meantime, solving the iOS puzzle has was, was like that was like the last big wall that needed to come down in the near term. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just r good news for, uh, for everyone involved and, and game. I mean, it's, it's becoming almost like a tiresome, I, I, I'm tired of saying it and I'm a true believer for it. Game pass is just the fucking best and it best. just keeps getting better. Best. Yeah. I was my, I, I got hit up by a family member looking for, uh, Xbox games for their kid. And I was just like, do they have game pass yet i was like buy game pass and they kept coming to me with old games like what about this game should i buy it i'm like no it's on game pass just buy game pass uh worth pointing out the chat kept me honest it's six players in the destiny raid my apologies everybody however we're we still did, not we done did, we, by the way this happened to me the other day someone I'm talking about this game called fog 
P-H-O-D, where you, uh, P-H-O-G, oh, where yeah, you play no, like with a little two-headed dog. Fogs, yeah. Fogs, yeah. With, with two, the two little, it's like a little snake, but each head, each end of the snake is like a dog's head. Yeah. And each player controls one of the heads. And it's really fun. I was like, oh, that, that'd be a great game for me to play with my kid. We love dumb, you know, co-op games like that. Checked it out. It's 20 bucks on Nintendo Switch. So, oh, maybe I'll get it. But then I was like, hmm, you never know. Wait a second. You never know. Let me go check yeah. Game Pass. Guess what? It's fucking right on Game Pass. Of Every it time is. that happens, Greg, it's like finding 20 bucks in the back pocket of your jeans. You yep. have the, exactly the same endorphin release. You go, it's oh my great. God, I just, I, I free money. I just saved that money. Now, uh, Jarrett West post goes on a little bit longer. We're not going to read all of that, but it ends like this. As we close out this year, I'd like to thank you again on behalf of Team Xbox, not just for giving Xbox Series X slash S a strong start, but for supporting our belief that this generation of gaming does and should belong to you. Stay tuned, starting with the Game Awards tomorrow, for more surprises. At, and I, as you know, Gary, when somebody from a company says something like that, it is blood in the gamer water and all the feeding frenzy begins. Uh, Druvenator writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says, hi, KFGD crew. Quickly, I recently upped my contrib- contribution to silver tier so I could write in. Thank you very much, uh, Druvenator. Uh, thank you for the hours of great content. Not a cue, but a roundup of some Xbox news that may have been missed in case you'd like to dive into it ahead of Game Awards, especially relevant as you pontificate on the announcements to expect. Then he lists, or Druvenator lists a bunch of uh, different things happening in the Xbox ecosystem. Gears 5 Hive Bursters DLC just announced. It looks so good and it's a big deal. It's included in Game Pass Ultimate as it's the DLC since the Gears 2 or 3. Forza is teasing a cyberpunk tie-in, plus hints from Jeffy Grub Grub of the eventual Forza Fo- Horizon 5 her- uh, announcement. Phil Spencer has publicly shared how excited he is for Compulsion's next game and the Initiative's next game. I think there's a strong likelihood we see either at the Game Awards. Uh, Shinobi on Reset Era is causing chaos, the good kind, heavily hinting at some Xbox reveal. And lastly, Xbox Wire came out today. They say, expect surprises tomorrow. <laughs> Megatons exploding around the world, Gary. The, the people there are on fire. The Xbox are out there. Snowbike Mike's waving the Xbox flag. It's all happening on Thursday. It's all happening on Thursday. Here comes Aaron Greenberg with a giant bucket of ice cold water. He tweets, you will see us and our social handles promoting tune in for the Game Awards tomorrow. We hope you support the industry and watch. While we have a couple of moments in the show, I would dial expectations way down versus the speculation I'm seeing, especially how big we went last year. There you go, Druvenator. Calm down. Snowbike Mike, wrap the flag back up. Put it down. Let's all just get ready for Game Awards tomorrow. Let's have some fun. You're not getting it. It's going to be fun. I don't think you're going to see a Wolverine game from the initiative. Perfect Dark from the initiative. We don't know. We'll see what happens, but everybody chill out, all right? This is, such, this is such a predictable cycle in the gaming space. We're seeing it happen with Cyberpunk, right? I fucking predicted this Cyberpunk backlash. Saw it coming a mile away because it's like the millionth time that it's happened. Yeah. You see it with you saw every, the game that's been talked about for like a decade. <laughs> maybe maybe it, it won't with, the expectations. We see it with every Nintendo Direct. That people get so fucking worked up about it all by themselves. And when it doesn't you know, hit their impossible expectations. They're like, fuck you, Nintendo. You disappointed me again. Yeah. It's like, dude, you went all the way. And I, I didn't walk you out there on the, on that, on the edge of that limb. You fucking got out there all by yourself. You decided this thing was going to be the second coming. And, and, and now you're blaming other people for thinking, you know, that it was going to be this amazing thing. We're seeing it again now. So yeah, I, it props to Aaron Breberg. Yeah, I, absolutely. He needs lots of buckets of ice cold water these days because gamers work themselves up into such a froth, into such a lather. And then when they're disappointed, the last thing they're going to do, of course, is look inward and go, oh, maybe I got carried away. Maybe it's me. No, no, no. It's everyone else's fault. Every fucking time, Greg. So now here, as Aaron said, temper your expectations, all right? Game awards are a fun time. Not going to see the world, you know, break free there. But you are going to see some stuff. Number three on the Roper Report, let's talk about game awards announcements. Matt Perslow at IGN makes his first appearance of the show, but not his last, and says, the Game Awards 2020 will feature around 12 to 15 brand new game announcements, according to the event's producer, Jeff Keighley. During a recent Reddit AMA for the December event, Keeley was asked how many new games would be revealed. Quote, I think there are a good dozen plus games that will be announced slash revealed at the show for the first time, he replied, and later clarified to a different query uh, that the total number could be around, quote, I think around 12 to 15 or so. In further clarification on Twitter, Keeley noted that these will be previously unseen games rather than additional information on games previously announced. Quote, yeah, I'm talking more about brand new games that have not been announced at all, he said on the thread. 
We know, for instance, that Bioware will be at the Game Awards with its new Dragon Age game. But since it was announced earlier this year, that game is in development. Presumably, that means it's not among those 12 to 15 announcements. As such, we may be seeing more than 12 to 15 games at the ceremony alongside the actual award announcements themselves. Mr. Gary Wood. Yes. Oscar winner for best performance in Rogue One. Yes. I know you don't care about the game awards as an award show. Awards are dumb. You, you like celebrating the industry, like giving Pat, but who cares what wins the other? Are I you? I don't think awards are necessarily dumb. I just don't get worked up over them the way that some people do. But are you excited about the announcements tomorrow? Are you excited about the game awards to see some uh, flashy new commercials? I will. I will decide if I'm excited about the announcements once I know what they are. Okay. okay. I, I, I can't be excited about something I know nothing about. You know, there's going to be 12 to 15 announcements. Now, could they all be like weird Atlas games? Sure, but they won't be. There'll I be mean, you know, there. given 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 that the Game Awards have over the years cultivated a reputation for generally having some pretty big announcements, um, I expect there will be at least one or two big ones. Yeah. yeah, and I'll be interested to see what they are. But in terms of what my excitement level is, I like if if one of them turns out to be GTA Six, yeah, my my excitement level will be fucking high. Um, if 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 it's if if it's you know more more news on the GTA Five fucking remaster for next gen, uh, sorry, I'm never I'm never gonna forgive Sony for that. By the way. You know I'm gonna you know I'm gonna be banging <laughs> You're on the about that. You're bitterest about it. You're so gonna, bitter. You know the same way that we go on about five hundred US dollars and Ridge Racer, like the, yeah. that GTA thing is gonna be that for me. Like I'm just never ever gonna forgive them for that. The emo the, that thirty second emotional roller coaster they put me through was so agonizing. I had to fucking make them pay for that for the rest of their lives. Never, fair, ever. Fair, I will never stop banging on about it. Um, yeah. Again, let's let's wait and see. Let hit hit. Here's here's a radical idea, Greg. We got let's a radical idea already really coming in from let's, Gary. Get let, ready. Let's 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 decide how excited we are about something after we know something about it. Or I don't know. Is that too radical? That's I don't know. too radical. I just want to have I want to have unbridled fun. I just want to be excited. You know. Let me go. I mean, I get that. Right, Again, this, this this year more than ever, we all need things to be excited about. Gary, you, join me. to whatever branch we can. Here, join me, Gary. Just let's get the bad taste out of both of our mouths. Spit on the floor, right? How excited are you about Cyberpunk? That's coming out today, 4 p.m. for us in our time zone. Cyberpunk 2077. You, I saw last night, Jeff Rubenstein from Xbox was like, put up a poll on where to go. You said Corpo. I'm a Corpo kid, too. Where are you at right now with your hype for cyberpunk? The funny thing about it is I've been I, I've been so out of touch on this. Um, I've ne I've never really thought of myself as someone who particularly has kind of their finger on the pulse pop culturally. I barely fucking have a pulse. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. At this point, so I, I'm always out of touch with like what's what's cool, especially like you know I, I you know everyone turns into their dad eventually, and I listen to you know what's on today's you know hit parade. Like, I, I, great. I just called it a hit parade. That's how fucking out of touch that's, I am. That's old. Like, that's I look, old. I listen to, I listen to like the, like what's in the charts currently. I'm like, this is just, what is this? Like, this is not music anymore. Like everyone. Does everyone that happen often? Does your that. daughter bring like a new, a new song she likes? And you're like, this is just nothing. This is beeps yeah. and boops. Yes. All the time. I, I, everyone turns into that. Trust me. It will happen to you. It will happen. Oh, I'm to already you. there. Yeah. Um, so, but on cyberpunk, you know, in video games, I'm still, I'm still interested enough in that world that I generally kind of have a sense of what's going on. With cyberpunk, the lead time on that, you know, we've been we've been talking about cyberpunk forever, right? It's been this tantric mm -hmm, mm -hmm. experience now that's gone on for ye literally tantric years, experience. waiting for this game. Um, and like, I just, I just, I just decided to in one way. I, I, this could be cool. I, I like this futuristic shit um you know it, it's got a great pedigree the witcher guys like this will probably be really good like i can see myself playing this but i wanted to temper my expectations i didn't want to get like too excited about it i didn't want to get impatient waiting for it sure and C cd project red have done an amazing job uh, in the messaging the pr the marketing the night city wire stuff the way that been, they've been dripping out the content the keanu reveal all of that stuff has been like as a pr campaign as a marketing campaign goes you know it's it's been masterfully orchestrated and the only thing that i would say against it and you can't really fault them for it is they have now uh contributed to building up expectations so so i mean the community's kind of run away with it as well the community has now gotten so fucking excited about this game that 
the disappointment that we're seeing <laughs> now was absolutely inevitable. It was 100%. I've said it on here before. Go back and find the clips. Of Greg, what if this game isn't as good as people think it's going to be? Sure. Because it would have, in order for it to be that, it would have to be one of the greatest games of all time. And I'm not saying it, that was impossible. That, that, but that's, that's rare. That's a, that's tall, a, that's a high bar. It it's had, a high bar. With its pedigree, it had a decent shot of being that. And maybe it is. You know, maybe once it's fully patched and people kind of settle in and, you know, a, a game this big, like people say, oh, here's like, here's my, here's my verdict on Cyberpunk like after 24 hours. You have no fucking verdict on a game that big after 24 hours. It's like a 200-hour game. Like I, I would want to read something like three months or six months or a year from mm, now where mm. people have really had a chance to live in that world. And like that's when – you know, you, you 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 can't judge a game that took years to make, like in 24 hours, in in any kind of meaningful way. So the first blush reactions that we're seeing right now, I kind of take them with a with a with a pinch of salt. What's interesting about it though is that I have been on the exact opposite track to kind of where the mainstream is on this for the long time. As people were getting super excited, watching every night CD Wire, I was like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I I didn't watch a single trailer. Smart. I wasn't like deliberately like trying to be on blackout for spoilers. I just I just didn't want to get like. I didn't want to play that like, you know, hype fever pitch game. I just wanted to kind of be immune to it. Sure. But then as the game, especially since the game kept getting delayed and who knows when it's coming out. But now that we know it's coming out about a week ago, I was like, fuck it. I'll watch a trailer. I'll see what this game is. <laughs> and, and I watched a couple of trailers. I watched a couple of trailers like, oh, it actually looks really cool. Like I, this, this could be exactly the kind of game that like, I've been looking for like a big, world that i could go get lost in for a long time maybe this is that game and just but just as i was getting excited about it people were starting to go off the boil as the impressions were coming ah oh, maybe it's not going to be what i thought it, you know maybe it's not the second coming you know uh, 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 that we thought it was going to be so i don't know i'll make i'll make my own decisions it does sound like there's there are some genuine issues uh to be discussed sure. we're seeing it right now you know the social the, some of the social uh issues you know the transphobia stuff yeah. the epilepsy the epilepsy thing which is yeah. just absolutely dumb how a developer that experienced could possibly do something that fucking stupid is amazing to me and they need to patch that shit out immediately 100%. immediately that's really really dumb um but i think you know once all that stuff settles down and they patch it and they make some adjustments and people start to kind of get a sense of what being in that in that world is really like that then we'll get a sense of whether or not this game was a success or a failure. I'm sure. just saying that what what we've seen the the you know the the slow slow build of of hype and, and to reaching like frankly just unreasonable levels. Of course, there was no way this game could live up to expectations. It's so it was so predictable. Everyone saw this coming. Well, I just except, want to know if you were excited the man, to play the it tomorrow. Fans. What's that? I just want to know if you're excited to start it tomorrow. I got it preloaded here on PC. Right, As you know, beautiful. I just got the RTX 3080. All right, how can um, I forget? So I'll be turning on the uh, the DLSS and the ray tracing and all that kind of shit. My big disappointment, and again, you can't ask for everything all at once. You know, this game was a massive undertaking. Was these next gen consoles just came out? The biggest game of the year just came out. I kind of wanted to play this game on yeah, a next gen console with all the next gen bells and whistles at launch, mm -hmm. but that's not mm -hmm. going to happen. I'm still going to get to play with the bells and whistles, probably bells and whistles that will surpass anything on a next gen console on PC, on a, on, a, on a flagship GPU starting tomorrow. And I'm excited about that. But I also wanted to kick back, you know, with the 4K OLED TV in my living room and have a next-gen experience uh, on console. And I'm going to have to wait until it seems like early next year to do that. So that's kind of a bummer. Well, Gary, I'm about to read the ads. But when I come out of the ads, we're going to talk about when you can expect the first piece of Cyberpunk DLC. So maybe you should. Yeah, I want to know. Next year. Don't worry about that. But for now, let me remind you, ladies and gentlemen, you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games to be part of the show. Get the show uh, with the post show. And most importantly for right now, get the show ad free because I'm going to tell you about our sponsors. I'm starting with Quip. There are only two types of people in this world. Those of us who brush and floss every day and those who might just start thanks to Quip's new refillable floss pick. Uh, you know Quip, the electric toothbrush. You hear about it all the time, especially from us. I'm not even reading the ad right now. I use my electric. I just bought Jen and me the new uh, Quips that do the thing where they sync to the phone and earn me points so I can get reward cards. But I'll maybe talk about that later in the ad or maybe not. I just love Quip. You know it. Uh, but it's time. 
to talk about their sleek reusable floss pick that you'll want to use next. The durable handle is easy to guide, uh, restrings with a click, and comes with a compact mirror dispensing case for on the go. Uh, Pair your floss with the perfect electric toothbrush for adults and kids. Quip has made simple guiding features you need, like time sonic vibrations for guiding pulses to help you brush better. You can personalize your routine with over nine premium brush colors, plus anti-cavity toothpaste for every taste in mint and watermelon. And now you can get amazing rewards for brushing every day. The Quip Smart Electric Toothbrush connects to the free Quip app so you can earn amazing rewards like free products and discounts. I'm using that every day. I'm very excited to get my stuff. Uh, Quip also delivers brush heads, floss, and toothpaste refills every three months for $5. Shipping is free so you can save money and skip the store. Bring delight to your everyday brushing and join the over 5 million miles brushing with Quip starting at $25. And if you go to getquip.com slash games right now, you'll get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash games. That's G-E-T-Q-U-I-P.com slash games. Quip, better oral health made simple now here's the next ad and i'll tell you i'm stoked to read it myself because i've heard a lot about it on the subreddit this is my first time reading it trojan trantix uh, tr- no yeah no it, it's like tantric so it's trojan tantrix pleasure sleeve while your hands get it done and frankly it's always going to be there there's a new and dare we say more exciting way to masturbate introducing trojan Tantrix, uh, the new sex toy for the boys. Uh, Introducing the new Trojan Tantrix Pleasure Sleeve, a handheld soft textured sleeve that's really, really soft. Kevin, do we know, did we get samples of these and why did I not get one? Uh, Tim got the sample. (sighs) As usual. Uh, Tantrix is designed uh, to enhance the sensation of each stroke with textured ridge for max pleasure. Yeah. Did he? Uh, Well, Tim said... That's what he said? Tim said... He'd get one for blessing. I think you can okay. put your name Tim, on Tim, get me list. one too. Uh, since it fits in your hand, you'll always know how to use it. And uh, you just do what you would normally do. You have a full range of motion so you can adjust your grip and pressure to stimulate where you want. Uh, use with a water-based lube. Use hand tricks uh, for solo pleasure to take pleasure into your own hands or spice up the elusive hand job and use it with your partner. With Trojan Trantix, uh, no, I want to yeah, Trojan Tantrix, there's a better way to do it. So head to Amazon, Walmart, or walmart.com to make masturbation so much more. Tell Tim when you see him next, Kevin, to order me one of these. Period, end of statement, all right? Okay, yeah, no problem. And our final sponsor of the day is BetterHelp. This podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. There's a broad range of expertise available, uh, which may not be locally available in many areas. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. Uh, You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. So you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change the counselors if needed. Uh, It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and financial aid is available. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, it's me, Greg, and you know I often talk about mental health and how uh, many times people, you, kind of funny best friends, have reached out, whether it be privately through uh, DMs, if you have my number, a text, or something on the subreddit. If you need someone to talk to, BetterHelp is there for you. They want you to start living a happier life today. Uh, You can visit their website and read their testimonials uh, right there. They're posted daily. Uh, you can visit betterhelp.com slash games. That's better, H E L P.com uh, slash games and join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Uh, special offer for Kind of Funny Games Daily listeners you can get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash games. Gary? Yeah. <laughs> Do you want me to put you down? Do you want me to put you down for a, a Trojan pleasure sleeve? Well, I, I was googling tantrics, it. Tantrics. I googled it. Which I, 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 it's a real thing. It's like it's 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 basically like a like a, a sleeve that you wrap around your I'm dick. Go, I'm putting and, it here too. And then yeah. and then you and then you fucking whack off. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, that's where we've what come. Like age, a, what like age a, we live in? A rubbery what is it? tortilla, right? I'm on Amazon. I'm not. Yeah, it, lo- it looks like a little street taco. Yeah, oh, man. Oh, I gotta see this. Taco. Don't, I don't. Know. And you and you and you and you wrap it around your uh, your member, <laughs> Here your John is. Thomas. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see. That's not what I was expecting. Wow, that's pretty great. I, I, I everyone should Google it and go to the. Tr- 
and then they have a three-step process. <laughs> yeah, step like, three is just wow, wow, yeah, wow. It came, it came right up on the Walmart <laughs> website. Out, <laughs> out, out, out of stock, Greg. Next really? Next-gen consoles, uh, uh, high-end video cards, that and, and, the uh, and uh, masturbation tacos. You can't get them anywhere. The, the hot the hot gifts go get it trojan you know what i mean this we're, holiday we've, season. kind of funny always been sex positive so we all know we're all jerking off oh yeah well, you know we've it. had but we've had butt plugs on this channel we, we did have that butt plug on that channel one time yeah uh number four on the rubber report cyberpunk dlc is coming in early 2021 again this is matt perslow uh, showing up for matt ign he's bookending our trojan read uh a uh, hidden message in the latest trailer for Cyberpunk 2077 has revealed that free DLC drops for the sci-fi RPG will begin to arrive in early 2021. In a single frame of the trailer, right at the end as the pre-order image flashes up, a lengthy message from CD Projekt Red can be viewed. The message reveals that the free DLC program for Cyberpunk 2077 will begin in early 2021 and provide an assortment of free, quote-unquote, cool stuff. Quote, we've mentioned before that expansions will be coming. And while we're not ready to talk specifics just yet, we will say that we've learned a lot from our work on both Hearts of Stone and Blood and Wine. Our planned expansions will take you even deeper into the world of Cyberpunk 2077, offering substantial, story-driven content that'll give you tough choices to make through impactful narratives that you won't soon forget, the developer says in this hidden message. Quote, but before we get there, we'll first be kicking off our free DLC program in early 2021. Just like with The Witcher 3, expect an assortment of free DLC packs to begin hitting Night City, dropping a bunch of cool stuff that'll eject even more life into the world of the dark future, end quote. If you don't, this is Matt again at IGN. If you don't recall CD Projekt Red's approach to The Witcher 3, the free DLC included minor quests, new outfits for both Geralt and major characters, and a new game plus mode. Cyberpunk 2077 would certainly be a prime candidate for all those elements, but with learnings uh, from this really rather good but with learnings from the really rather good Hearts of Stone and Blood and Wine expansions under its belt, hopefully there's some slightly more inspiring tidbits to come with the free program. As usual, you know, I think CD Projekt Red uh, jumped to prominence in terms of uh, being on gamers mind in a good way when they you know launched witcher 3 and they said their dlc was going to be free and they put a thank you note in there it's cool to see them still do that with cyberpunk i'm excited to get in there and see what that's going to look like i'm reading amazon reviews now what are they saying for the well for the for the uh for the um the trojan the whack the, the, the trojan yeah. thing yeah the whack off taco whatever yeah. you want to yeah. call it yeah. yeah it's i mean it's well, it's, 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 a, it's a whole thing <laughs> who, who, who was sitting around going you know what Jerking off is pretty good, but it could be. Better. We can make it better. I mean, who, who is that? Who is that fucking brilliant guy? I'll tell you who's brilliant. The geniuses in Trojan. That's who. You know what I mean? That's who thought it up. God bless them. I gotta get this thing. Uh, number five on the rope report: Control has sold more than two million units. This is James Bachelor of GamesIndustry.biz. Remedy Entertainment's acclaimed action game Control has shifted more than two million units since launching last year. The figure was revealed during the company's first ever Capital Markets Day presentation, which provides an update on Remedy for investors and analysts. It makes Control the developer's fastest-growing new IP since Max Payne. Uh, this has been, this has in part been enabled by the fact that Control is the studio's first true multi-platform game in years due to microsoft exclusivity limiting alan wake and quantum break to xbox and pc the finnish studio said the sci-fi title continues to sell strong uh, noting that november 2020 was a record month for the game thanks to promotions remedy noted that there has been a significant shift to digital in 2020 whereas physical counting i'm sorry physical copies accounted for 40 percent of the game in 2019 it has shrunk to 10 percent this year not much there but congratulations to control and remedy for continuing to find yeah. success in that you can actually get the Trojan thing on on Amazon, by the way, but it doesn't ship oh. until December fourteenth. But maybe maybe you just bake that into like the whole tantric experience. Like maybe exactly. when oh it show up is like hundred yeah. percent. Exactly. You know the anticipation. Yeah, like the long, like, like the longer you can make it last. The, the, and not the, to mention, the, this the is better. a great stocking stuffer. All right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You'll stock. Oh yeah. Am I wrong, Kevin? Am I wrong? No, you'll stuff that stocking for sure. Yeah. Do you, exactly. Do you, do you think it's a, do you think it's a good a good thing to gift someone? I think it's a good white elephant gift. Yeah, one of those I don't things think it's a good office. I don't think it's a good office white elephant gift. That's a problem. But you and your friends are doing a white Depends elephant? Depends on the office. Kevin, no. <laughs> Tell <laughs> you, I'm not giving out that advice. <laughs> I'm not going to fucking come here and have it be a bunch of people fired in January because they all came in with the, uh, the Trojan uh, tantrics. Just laugh right? it off and say you didn't know what it was. Guys, uh, Tim Getty's from Kind of Funny here. I hey, just want to let, let you all know <laughs> that I did just send an email off that uh, the subject line just says the sleeve. 
We need and, millions. Uh, the 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 rest of the email reads: Yo, LOL. The team of the team is obsessed with the sleeve. Hook us up. <laughs> So we'll see I where mean, this I feel, goes. I, 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 feel, I feel like there's some uh, Nick and Andy content waiting, waiting to happen oh, here. God. <laughs> Gary, I'll make sure we sleeve you up, though, okay? Talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye. I'm going to sleeve you up. I don't know what song that is. Oh, <laughs> Number six and final on the Rover Report. Two simple updates for you for PlayStation games. Uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales has gotten a PlayStation 5 update. I'm reading from German Strands on Twitter. Uh, it is 261.9 megabytes in size, and it adds performance RT mode. This is 60 frames per second with ray tracing. Uh, it looks amazing, according to German Strands, with constant 60 frames per second. No word on the resolution yet, but it looks good. So taking the things people love from performance and fidelity mode combining them into one right now for miles morales that's awesome i want to see that real real uh bad did you you still haven't started miles right Gary? no i again great this, this is why Gary, it works out at launch because it works you out. Just, wait, just wait a couple of patches and you get a better version yeah, exactly, 100%. Uh, speaking of that, Dreams is getting an update. The Dreams 2.20 update is live right now. It gives threaded comments. All the Media Molecule prizes are remixable. Dreamiverse banner indicators, and you have a reduced wrap on the thumbnails. Plus, there's bug fixes and more. Is Gary, there something... Oh, sorry. In, in, in England, Greg, we have a game called Soggy Biscuit. Is there, do you know what that is, and are you... Is there an American... You cut out there at we, the end. We, we lost him. You I know think what you're I mean? talking like, about... Mind... I think... I think you're talking like I think so. It's like is that's like a circle. I think trick, it might right? be called like Ookie yeah. Cookie or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, okay. let's not talk about that instead, like, Gary. No, Gary, I don't want to talk I'm about just, Ookie Cookie. Like, that that is the, that is the Andy and Nick content that I want. Oh my god! God! <laughs> oh, god. oh, Gary! Come on, the ultimate, the ultimate pay per view event. Don't don't tell me that they wouldn't put put up the biggest. No Do not even try to fucking tell me, Greg, that that would not put up the biggest numbers KF's ever done. Because you know it would. You know it in your heart of hearts. This motherfucker just dropped Ookie Cookie. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's soggy, soggy biscuit in England. Oh, I like how if you, you talk about if you is, talk Greg, about Avengers you will, you or will, PlayStation trophies, that'll bring me into the chat. The chat for the went, show. You, you talk you about went, Ookie Cookie. Here comes you Tim Getty slamming through the wall like a Kool Aid man. You all went to party schools. Don't tell me you haven't fucking played it. Oh my god, <laughs> Gary! <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> Gary, if I wanted to know what was coming to Mama Grab Shops, where the fuck would I go? <laughs> the I'm gonna need a second. Hold on. The official. <laughs> I just because my my head is already like I'm already showing me like what that episode. <laughs> no, stop thinking about the like. episode of KFA. Stop it. You can okay. All right. The official list of upcoming software on each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah. I'm a professional. You can nail it. You got there. Even when uh, I break, I can get right back on the you, horse. Yeah, I was going to say, you get bucked off, you're right back. Out today, do not feed the monkeys on Xbox One. I, AI on Xbox One. Unto the end on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Ghost Runner on Switch. F1 2020 receives a free F2 2020 season update on all platforms. Rocket League's Season 2 is now available on all platforms. And then there's a new holiday-themed skin line coming to Valorant. New dates for you. Uh, PUBG is getting an update. The latest season features a new battleground named Haven, which is set in a unique environment that evolves play Players gameplay experiences survivors can drop into season 10 when it releases on pc on december 16th and december 17th for consoles gary it's time to squat up this is where one of you writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny games giving us your name username platform of choice and why you need help in a video game i read it here the best friends come and find you and everybody plays games together uh cartman vt needs help on reddit where his name is cartman vt C-A-R-T-M-A-N-V-T, all one word. Hey, KFBFs, I'm looking to start a game club with some nice folks from this community. If you'd like to join me in playing and discussing different games, head over to the subreddit r slash KF Game Club. Uh, I'm kicking off with the educational game Frog Fractions, which is free on Steam. If you want to be in uh, the KF Game Club on the subreddit, go hit up Cartman VT on Reddit. We ask people watching live to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what we screw up as we screw it up. But Gary... 
you're wrong is blank. We crushed it today. We didn't get any of the details about soggy biscuits. Because we were dead, dead right about everything, Greg. Exactly. It's about time. You know what I mean? Uh, tomorrow, it's going to be me and Tim hosting. Uh, Friday, if the show hasn't been canceled, it'll be me and Blessing. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is kind of Funny Games Daily, but the fun doesn't end here. Right after this, we are going to patreon.com slash Games to do that there kind of funny post show you can get only on patreon.com slash kind of funny games each and every weekday uh if you're sticking around here on the old uh twitch.tv slash kind of funny games up next is going to be internet explorers with tim nick and andy uh if you're going somewhere else or you're watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games roosterteeth.com podcast services remember there are a million different kind of funny shows out there we would love it if you subscribed and watched all of them consider going to patreon to support us if you like this stuff and remember until next time It's been our pleasure to serve you.